The film is about a relationship that was generated between a director, in the case it was me, and the Brazilian guy who was sentenced to death in Indonesia. And uh, he was in this uh, maximum security prison. So he decided to do a film and invited me to do this film. And it was his desire to leave this, this legacy, to leave a film about his story. He was certain that he was going to be released. So the film was not, not going to be about a guy who was executed. But uh, of course, we don't control life. Life controls us, so the things change. And then I started realizing that his death could, could be somehow used to, to, to open discussions about death row, about death penalty. And, uh, and if, if that happens and, and people start looking at, at uh, the possibilities of, of people having second chances, then the movie would be worthwhile. The prisons are the worst place in the planet. It's, if you're young, under 18, you go to this reformatory and that's the, the, the you, you live there probably PhD in criminality because you mix small marginals, small traffic dealers, people that didn't have much chance in life. So you're caught, if you're caught doing something wrong, you go to these institutions. And if you don't have a direction or something, probably you, you leave this place worse. And the same for the prisons, overloaded prisons with a lot of illness, sickness. And, uh, there's no dignity for the person who uh, made a mistake and want to, to change, want to reform, and had to pay the time in prison. So for sure the prison shows a lot about society. I used to know Marco Asher, the Kurumin, very superficially. I mean, when he, you, uh, we were the same age, so when we were, we were young, and uh, he used to live in Brazil because afterwards he moved to Amsterdam. But at that time, I met him many times when he invited me to do the film. And I said, look, I'm going to go and research and go into the, the veins of your story. So please be honest. And uh, if you want to leave a story for somebody, somebody to tell, uh, don't lie to me. Don't hide anything from your past. So we started a real professional relationship. But of course, after three years speaking to him on the phone, like every week, we used to record things and he used to write letters. So we start, of course, becoming uh, effectuated because uh, I, start, I start realizing that he, the choices he had done in life, although I didn't agree uh, the way he decided to survive by selling drugs, but I, I start understanding how all he went through his life and the options he made, and he regretted. So he wanted to leave a film not only for uh, to, sh to show that he regretted, but he wanted to leave as an example for young kids not to take his same path. So that kind of tied us together closer and closer. At, at, at the end, when he was executed, I mean, I felt like I was losing a friend. Yeah, the act of dying in a film, in a documentary, for sure you can film it. You know, not only the result, but uh, if you're shooting a documentary, you have seen many of many documentaries, I may not agree with it. You should, I mean, if you're in, in, in the wrong place, in the wrong moment, you shoot that final moment of somebody, for sure you can shoot it. I mean, if you can avoid it, that's another thing, but uh, today is invisible cameras everywhere, so death has been shown all around. Our destiny is, the, the, we're moving, dying every day. So cinema is trying to imitate life, but nobody can imitate life. Life is bigger than, than the cinema. You cannot give the power to state to kill anybody. For principle, one, one of the reasons is, if the state has this power, it can eliminate any individual put some fake proofs in you and, and eliminate you from society. They'll kill you. Nobody has this right to take anybody's life.